Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. If my voice sounds a little bit different in this video, it's because I've been recovering from a cold. It's not the uh, human malware, just common cold and a bit of a dry, sore throat. Anyway, we will uh, get on with today's video. So, a few days ago now, I put together our first round of Z490 motherboard VRM testing featuring boards priced between $100 and $170 US. In short, if you missed that content, the ASUS Prime Z490P and MSI Z490A Pro were both excellent, maintaining stability with even the Core i9-10900K overclocked to 5.1 GHz. Under those same conditions, Gigabyte's Z490 UD failed, though it wasn't a complete loss with passes for the stock 10900K testing and decent results with the overclocked 10600K. But the real failures were seen when looking at ASRock's Z490 Phantom Gaming 4 and Z490 Pro 4. Both boards were hugely disappointing and they certainly didn't live up to the marketing material. The Phantom Gaming 4 couldn't even handle the stock TDP Limited 10900K. It was a complete disgrace. After putting that video together, I just couldn't believe how bad some of these Z490 motherboards were. I mean, how do you take Intel's flagship LGA 1200 chipset and put it on such a bad board? It's a bit baffling, and while I was struggling to come to terms with the findings, it suddenly dawned on me that we actually already have a B460 board that's better than ASRock's Phantom Gaming 4. And I don't just mean lower VRM temps, I mean it's actually faster with the 10900K and core heavy workloads like our Blender test. The board in question is MSI's MAG B460M Mortar. It's actually the only B460 board we were sent and I appreciate MSI sending it over because frankly, I'm not gonna waste any of our money on these locked boards. And I think you guys would much prefer that we put that money towards getting our hands on every last AMD B550 motherboard. But since I have the B460M mortar and I've already used it to test the Core i5-10600K, I thought why not put it in our VRM test system and see how it handles the 10900K. Could a $115 US B460 motherboard actually be better than $150 to $170 US Z490 motherboards? Prior to testing the Z490 Phantom Gaming 4 and Z490 Pro 4, I would have said no, but I'm quickly starting to reconsider. And you'll see why as we take a look at the B460M mortar, it's actually pretty crazy comparing these boards. Before we even get to the VRM, the B460M mortar appears to be putting the $170 US Z490 Pro 4 to shame. Around at the I.O. panel, you get the same USB configuration, but the audio has been upgraded with five rear jacks and an optical interface. The wired networking has also been upgraded to 2.5 gigabits per second. And on board, you still get two M.2 slots, while the front USB has been upgraded to 3.2 Gen 1. But focusing our attention towards the VRM section of the board, and the first thing you'll notice is how robust the cooling solution on the mortar appears. The heat sinks look much larger than many of the versions found on the entry level Z490 boards, and in fact, they are. The Gigabyte Z490UD featured 200 grams of metal, the MSI Z490A Pro 237 grams, the ASRock Z490 Pro 4 270 grams, and the ASRock Z490 Phantom Gaming 4 just 79 grams. The B460M mortar, on the other hand, that includes 331 grams of aluminium heat sinks, just over four times more than what you'll find on the Phantom Gaming 4, which again, that's a Z490 motherboard. MSI has also cut a number of fins into these heat sinks in an effort to increase the surface area for better heat dissipation. But of course, what's under the heat sinks is even more important. And here we find a dozen Sinopower SM4337 discrete MOSFETs on the high side and a dozen Sinopower SM4503 discrete MOSFETs on the low side. This is a six phase V-Core VRM. So MSI has doubled up the components for each phase to increase the current capacity. Also, the Sinopower MOSFETs are significantly better than the on-semiconductor models used on even Gigabyte's UD. So I'm expecting the mortar to not just shame ASRock's entry-level Z490 boards, but also Gigabyte's as well. So to find out if that is the case, let's move on to the testing. Before we get to the graphs, let's talk about the test conditions. For this testing, we are using our dedicated VRM test machine for LJ1200 boards. And this system has been built with the help of Corsair, who sent over their Obsidian Series 500D mid-tower case, RM850X power supply, IQH150i RGB Pro XT all-in-one liquid cooler, and 32 gigabytes of their Vengeance RGB Pro DDR4 3200 memory. 
The Obsidian 500D has been configured with a single rear 120mm exhaust fan and then two top mounted 140mm exhaust fans. Then in the front of the case, we've installed the H150i 360mm radiator with three 120mm intake fans. This is a pretty standard configuration, airflow is good, and in a 21 degree room, I'd say this is an optimal setup. For recording temperatures, I'm using a digital thermometer with K-type thermocouples, and I'll be reporting the peak rear PCB temperature. Finally, I'm not reporting delta T over ambient, instead I maintain a room temperature of 21 degrees, and this is by far the most accurate way to conduct this testing. And to ensure a consistent ambient temperature, a thermocouple is positioned next to the test system. By default, the mortar has a current limit of 210 amps, which is almost enough to see the 10900K sustain an all-core clock frequency of 4.9 GHz for the duration of our blender stress test. For reference, higher end Z490 motherboards, they feature a 256 amp current limit, and that allows them to run the 10900K at an all core clock frequency of 4.9 gigahertz. So the out of the box results that you're looking at here don't represent an apples to apples comparison as the power configuration varies from board to board, and that's why the sustained frequency is included. What's really interesting here is that the B460 mortar sustained a higher frequency than any of the Z490 motherboards, including MSI's own Z490A Pro, though that board does feature similar power limits, so this is probably just a discrepancy in the BIOS versions. What's really shocking to note here is that the mortars VRM operate at the same 81 degrees as Gigabyte's Z490UD, while maintaining a higher clock speed, 400 megahertz higher in fact. The mortar also destroyed ASRock's Z490 Pro 4, running the 10900K 1100 megahertz higher while shaving nine degrees off the peak operating temperature. And I'm not even gonna bother discussing the Phantom Gaming 4, which failed this test due to VRM throttling. When compared to MSI's own Z490A Pro, the B460M mortar ran 15 degrees hotter with a slightly higher package power. And that is quite impressive given we're comparing a $160 Z490 motherboard to a $115 B460 board using the flagship 10 core 20 thread 10900K. But perhaps even more impressive are the TDP limited results, forcing the mortar to run the base TDP spec, which sees an all core frequency of 4.4 gigahertz. The board's peak VRM temperature dropped it to 68 degrees. That means under the same test conditions, the mortar is running 13 degrees cooler than Gigabyte's $170 Z490 offering, and just nine degrees hotter than the ASUS Prime Z490P. So pretty incredible stuff. Now, with the power limits removed, the mortar ran the 10900K at an all-core clock frequency of 4.9 GHz, the same frequency achieved by the ASUS Prime Z490P, MSI Z490A Pro, and Gigabyte Z490UD. Unfortunately though, both the ASRock boards failed this test, either crashing when loading into Windows or when starting our stress test, and additional voltage didn't help rectify the situation. So in this apples to apples testing, we see that the mortar runs around 10 degrees hotter than the very best entry level Z490 motherboards, which happen to come from ASUS and MSI. It was also 18 degrees cooler than Gigabyte's Z490 UD, and at 85 degrees, that is a comfortable result. Even in much warmer environments, with say 30 degree ambient temperatures, the mortar will handle the Core i9-10900K just fine for prolonged core heavy use. Quite incredible stuff there. I would have never imagined that we would see a relatively affordable B460 motherboard completely dominate some of the lower tier Z490 boards. And for me, this highlights two main issues. Firstly, it obviously highlights just how bad the ASRock and Gigabyte entry-level Z490 boards are. Though, to Gigabyte's credit, the rest of their Z490 range is pretty good. I've just completed a lot of follow-up testing with sub $200 Z490 boards, which you'll see on the channel soon, and Gigabyte does have some nice boards on offer. ASRock, though, face issues that expand beyond the Phantom Gaming 4 and Pro 4. Still, in the case of Gigabyte, does it make sense to offer a Z490 board that's technically much worse than a B460 board? Personally, I think not, and for me this highlights an even bigger issue with the Intel platform. It's our opinion that most of Intel's 10th gen core lineup just doesn't make sense. The value is simply not there, and this is something the tech media and community seem to largely agree upon. But just imagine if the MSI B460M mortar was an unlocked board, a board you could pair with an overclocked Core i5-10600K and some high frequency DDR4 memory. What an incredibly good value gaming combo that would be. And if Intel wished to become even remotely competitive over the next few generations, this is something they'll certainly be forced to do. 
Short of this though, Intel simply isn't competitive enough in most instances, even if you happen to be just gaming. For example, the Core i5-10400 and Core i5-10100 make no sense without an unlocked B460 board. The FSKUs might, but they don't exist yet. In my opinion, Intel's really shooting themselves in the foot here, but I guess for now they don't have much of a need to change things. Supply is so heavily constrained to the point where whatever demand there is for these 10th gen parts, Intel's unable to meet it. So there's little incentive for them to increase the platform's appeal. It's also pretty crazy how there is a $55 US price premium for the Gigabyte Z490UD, especially given that overall the Morta is a better quality board with features such as 2.5 gigabit networking support. It's even more crazy when you consider the fact that if you were to pair the Core i9-10900K with the ASRock Z490 Phantom Gaming 4, or the Z490 Pro 4, it would run 1100 megahertz slower than it would on the much cheaper B460M mortar. And even when manually tuning power limits, it's impossible to match the B460 performance with these low quality Z490 boards. Truly amazing stuff. And that's gonna do it for this one. Not much more to say on this topic, pretty surprising results. Let me know what you thought about the results. And I'm also interested to get your feedback on what you think about Intel still locking out overclocking and memory support on their B460 range. Basically anything that isn't a Z series motherboard, uh, whereas AMD obviously doesn't do that. So I think that's something Intel are gonna have to uh, revise in the not too distant future. If Well, they should have probably done it by this point, but anyway, let me know what you guys think about that. Also, if you, well, if you found the video useful or enjoyed it, there's the like button. You can subscribe if you want more content like this, if you haven't done so already. We also have our Patreon account if you would like to get more involved with the Harbor Unbox channel, join the community over on Discord. Uh, we do a monthly live stream for our Patreon members where we talk about pretty much anything and everything. Uh, we have Q and A's, behind the scenes videos. So if you're interested, links in the video description, go check it out. If not, that's perfectly fine, of course. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video, especially for making it all the way to the end. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>